The research that we've been doing here over a number of years really focuses on a wide range of issues related to prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is by far the most common cancer that men get in the United States and in most of the developed world. It's the second most common cause of cancer mortality after lung cancer, but most men with prostate cancer die of other things, most commonly heart disease, just like men who don't have prostate cancer. So there's a real challenge in trying to figure out the best ways of managing the disease, of matching treatment more appropriately and more effectively to disease risk. So anything that we do to the prostate has a potential risk of side effects due to the prostate's location anatomically. It's very intimately associated with the bladder and the rectum. The urethra goes right through the middle of the prostate. And anything that we do to the prostate has a potential impact on those organs as well as on erection function because the nerves that drive penile erections run right along the back surface of the prostate. So if we do surgery or do radiation therapy, we risk impacting uh, urinary function and sexual function. Uh, in some cases permanently. One of the great needs is to be able to tell this person with greater confidence this will not progress. You know, right now I can say, well, there's 70, 80 percent chance this will not progress, but that other 20 percent is keeping them up at night in a cold sweat every week. And so if we can get to the point where I can say, well, we've got new genetic tests, we've got new imaging tests, and I can tell you with 95 percent confidence this will not become a problem. I think it really changes the paradigm a little bit for surveillance. There are, there are literally dozens of risk stratification tools, nomograms, and a variety of instruments that are out there to help clinicians risk stratify prostate cancer, figure out who's got low risk, intermediate risk, high risk disease. One of which we developed here over the last five years called the Cancer of the Prostate Risk Assessment Tool, uh, which has accuracy as good as some of the competing nomograms, but it's very simple to calculate. It's the sort of thing with a little bit of practice you can do from memory. And our hope is that with tools like this, we will see a better alignment of treatment with disease risk rather than with age or local practice preferences or some of these other factors that should not be driving prostate cancer decision making to the extent that they do. I do think in the next three to five years we're going to get to the point where we will have uh, clinically applicable tools that will make a big difference to risk stratification. We're already starting to see it. There are tests hitting the market that we're starting to incorporate into clinical practice to a limited extent. They haven't gone through large validation studies yet but are very promising. Uh, but some of the tests that are in the short-term pipeline are very exciting and I think really may change the face of the way the way disease is managed.